the college, the college, the college football season is almost here. We are less than a month away. I am very excited um, for the opportunity to, you know, see fans back in the stands, especially here in the Big Ten. Um, This is something that people know here in Big Ten country, especially the Midwest, that the Big Ten has some of the great fans great fan bases in college football, some of the best traditions, some of the best college towns, and some of the best big cities that the United States can offer. And just just to be back is huge. Um, obviously, a lot of expectations for a lot of different teams. And let's get into it. So we have Michigan State. And Michigan State is a team that many people feel, especially the experts feel, that they are going to be overrated, that they're overrated. I don't see Michigan State as an overrated football team. Obviously, last year they were 3-5, and five, not the best not the best um, start for Mel Tucker. You know, to be 3-5, and five, you, obviously you would love for them to, you know, be better. Um, but we get to see a look right away how good this Michigan State team is. There's been talk that they've improved. They have guys like Xavier Henderson back, and they'll be facing Northwestern to start the season. Um, both teams are going to have a lot to prove. I'm excited, but just focusing on Michigan State, I don't see that. I don't see them being overrated. Um, they do play Rutgers. They play Maryland, and Northwestern. Those are these are games that they should be likely to win. If they struggle with these teams, I can see how people possibly say that they're going to be an overrated football team. But right now, going into the season, I don't think that they're overrated at all. Another team that that many experts have overrated is the Nebraska Cornhuskers. To me, uh, Scott Frost is back. Um, I have nothing but respect for him. Obviously, we've seen what he did at UCF. He has the potential to be a great coach. It's just very tough, you know. You know, being in the Big Ten, there's a lot of there's a lot of talent in this league. He's getting a hard lesson in that. Um, I don't I don't see Scott Frost being on the hot seat. I think that he's beloved by many Husker fans. This is year three though, and I we're looking for him to have a jump. Obviously, with Adrian Martinez at quarterback, I thought that jump would have been made last year, but obviously for many teams, last year was very tough for so many different reasons. So I'm I'm, I'm giving him pass for that. But I would like to see Nebraska be much improved. The defense, can it continuously get better? I think it can. This is a team that can compete for the Big Ten West. Well, we shall see. Another team that I'm kind of surprised that experts have overrated is Iowa. Iowa, to me, has shown consistency for so many years, obviously, with Kern Ferentz. They have, a, they have, really, they have really great talent. Um, I think... They can be a surprise team. I don't see them as an overrated team at all. I think Iowa can continuously get better. I, I feel like the offense will be much improved. It's going to shock a lot of people. I think Iowa can be more than just a run first team. I feel like they have some potentially great wide receivers, and it should be a great year for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Next, <laughs> my favorite. It says the most overrated team, many people believe the most overrated team in the Big Ten is that team up north. <laughs> okay. Um, each and every year I root for them to do to do well. Um, obviously when I was a little kid I didn't get to see two thousand and six when team when we were when both teams were one and two had opportunity to go to national to go to a championship game. I didn't see that game. I seen, I think it was in 2016, uh, I think it was like a 2-3 matchup or a 2-4 matchup where Curtis Samuel, he scored the game when a touchdown. Um, that team up north, they, they, they have a potential to be a great team. Um, and what works for them versus, I think, any other Big Ten team is that they know when they're going to play Ohio State. I think each year these teams don't know. Most teams in the Big Ten, they don't know – when they're going to play the, when they're going to play Ohio State, that should be an advantage that they should take advantage of. They know that their last game they're going to play Ohio State. Um, this team offensively obviously uh, needs to look, look better. Um, Josh Goddard's back from Alabama. It's a lot different when you don't have Alabama receivers and weapons that they do. But I think this team can be improved. I don't see them as being overrated as much as I want them to be overrated. I hope for them to do good. Um, I believe 
that it is going to be very tough. He's in a division with, obviously, Ohio State. Penn State looks to be improved. Indiana, obviously, is coming off a, t- a terrific season. Um, it's it's going to be tough for him. But I think – I don't see him on the hot seat, um, but he's going to have to win some games. And I'm talking at least nine to ten wins before you even get to playing your last game against Ohio State. If, if that team of North has, you know, three, four losses – before they even face Ohio State, he could be on the hot seat. Now, let's get to the underrated teams. They say that they have Indiana as the number one ranked underrated team in the Big Ten. I don't feel like they're underrated. Um, they're, In my opinion, coming into the season, they will be ranked in the top 25. That is my opinion. They will be ranked in the top 25, maybe even top 15. They have a lot of people returning. Obviously, none other than Michael Penix Jr. at quarterback. They have a lot of transfers from some big-name Power 5 schools, so I don't really see how they're going to be underrated. Um, Indiana, and then on top of that, they get to host. <laughs> they get to host my Buckeyes at home. Now, they do start off the season at Iowa. They also face the Cincinnati Bearcats, so we're going to get a good, good test of how underrated or overrated this team is, to say the least. But overall, I think they're going to have a great season. It starts off at Iowa, which is a very, very tough matchup for anybody, and then playing Cincinnati. You don't know what you're going to get. But then at the end of the day, they still get Ohio State at home. They get Minnesota at home, which is going to be huge, especially getting Ohio State. Another year of development, you know, they they tasted success. I'm very interested to see how are they going to deal with that success. Now, another underrated team is Minnesota. Um, we get to see week one right off the bat at how underrated this Minnesota team is because if they can come out, you know, beat my Buckeyes, they're going to be on the map right away. Obviously, they didn't have the best of seasons last year, uh, Minnesota, but, you know, to come out right away, you get to face Ohio State, you can, send a, you can send a statement, a message not only to the Big Ten but the rest of the country that you are a factor in the college football playoff dis- discussion. Um Tanner Morgan, we'll see. We, we, we shall see. Another underrated team, they say, is Purdue. Um, Purdue, I don't, see their, I don't see them being an underrated team. I feel like they're going to be overrated. Um, I don't see – I just don't believe in Purdue. I don't believe in them. I don't think they're going to have that successful of a season at all. I just, I just can't I – just, I, I just can't see it. They start off against – they have a really cupcake early – um, first two games playing obviously Oregon State and UConn. If you if we want to really find out if you're an underrated team, we shall see how they do against Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a premier college football team. You're going to Notre Dame. What are you going to do in this game? Because it does not get any easier. You have to go to Iowa. You have to go to Ohio State. So I mean that Notre Dame game is going to tell us all we need to know about this Purdue team. Because their their road schedule is very, very tough. I am interested to just see the overall development of Illinois. Um, Illinois is a team that I've been waiting for them to, to make that jump. Just to, can they take that jump? Can they take that jump? And I just haven't seen that jump yet. I've seen that jump more from Rutgers, who I'm very excited about. They play Temple. They play at Syracuse, at Delaware. Before they head up to... Before they head up to the big house, they could be. We could be looking at Rutgers as a three and zero team. Obviously, with Greg Schiano, this is a team they love him. He gets them to play hard. They compete to the very end. I remember them coming to the horseshoe last year. Obviously, with all the odds stacked against them, they. I feel like they played very competitive, and they they you know gave Ohio State a wake up call and showed Ohio State you can't just show up. These teams fight to the very end. Another team that I am excited about, I, I, love, I love James Franklin as a coach. Um, but their schedule early is very tough. You go to Wisconsin, and then you host Auburn. So for Penn State, what are you going to do? Because a lot of Penn State fans, I have, Penn, I have friends that go to Penn State. They're interested and very excited to see this team improve. James Franklin is not on the hot seat. But I think if they don't improve this year, he can be looking at being on the hot seat going into next year because Wisconsin is an improved team. Jim, I love Jim Leonard as a defensive coordinator. Wisconsin, we know what their identity is. Iowa, we know what their identity is, and it just so happens that they have to face both teams in a row. If they could come away with both wins at Wisconsin, at, at Iowa, 
we can be looking at them as a potential playoff team. Then they also go to Ohio State. Their road schedule is not easy at all. But they have some guys returning on offense, some guys returning on defense. James Franklin is not going to have a – they're not going to start off 0-5. I can hear 0-5, I guarantee you, they play Ball State. They won't be starting off 0-5. They play Villanova. It's a very, you know, they got some cupcakes in there. But the, all that Auburn game and Wisconsin game, I'm very interested to see how this team performs. Very, very, very interested in seeing what they do this season. Now let's get to Ohio State. Um, um, obviously going on the road to Minnesota, you know, a big thing. You know, obviously this team struggles on the road. You don't know what you're going to get all the time. I think obviously with Urban Meyer leaving, you know, they have a little bit more focus on the road. Um, going to Minnesota is not going to be a tough place. To, it's not going to be an easy place to play. It's a primetime game. It's a Thursday night game. Um, so this is not even a Saturday night game. So Ohio State better bring their A game if they want a shot at the college football playoff because teams, people do not want Ohio State in the playoff. And if they lose, obviously, Ohio State lose one or two games, they're not making the playoff because after that they, we face Oregon at home. So it's very vital that Ohio State gets off to a great start, sends Minnesota a message that we – are not to be messed with, obviously coming off that very, very disappointing, heartbreaking loss to the Crimson Tide and the, the Devontae Smith Crimson Tide in a championship game. You want to get off to a good start because it doesn't get any easier. You come back and you face Oregon, which is, is no easy task, KV on Thibodeau and all of that in their defense. If I had to put a finger on it right now, I'm going to just take Ohio State out of it. My favorite in the Big Ten West right now, I would say Iowa and Wisconsin. I I can definitely see Iowa competing for that big, representing the Big Ten West, and in Indianapolis playing for a Big Ten championship. Now, when we get to the Big Ten East, who can cause Ohio State the most threat? Who can be a factor in disrupting Ohio State from getting back to the Big Ten championship game? <sighs> I'm going to go with Penn State. I would have to go with Penn State, so a team that can put a wrench in any title hopes of Ohio State is Penn State. I think, obviously, Penn State, they play Ohio State very tough. James Franklin is coming. He has came to Columbus before. You know, he's been in Ohio State before, obviously, at home, but he has came to Columbus before. And if it wasn't for a meltdown, they would have beat Ohio State in 2017. He has a Big Ten championship. This is a team that is not going to start out 0-5. Um, you never know what the weather is, especially late October in Columbus. They are the only team on this side that I feel that can give Ohio State any problems from and prevent us from obviously trying to get to a college football playoff. Um, another team that I could see, I don't really see another team. I feel like Ohio State is very focused. Um, this season, they have a lot of returning talent. Obviously, we don't know who the quarterback is going to be. Um, but if I had to pick, it would, it would probably be Penn State that can cause the most problems for Ohio State. And if we have a Penn State, Wisconsin, I mean a Penn State, if we have Ohio State, Penn, if we have an Ohio State versus Iowa Big Ten championship, you know who I would roll with. I would give Iowa a slight nod. Um, another, another surprise team that I feel is the Wisconsin Badgers. And ground merch. Are you going to start 21 to 22? Or are you going to struggle? Obviously, they were racked by so many different things last year. Wisconsin has Jim Leonard. They're going to have a great defense. It's all about merch, what he can do at that quarterback position. If he plays well, they can easily, I can see them easily going to the Big Ten championship and um, hopefully facing my Buckeyes or another team. Um, lastly, another team that we didn't really talk about uh, was Northwestern. I, I believe. Um, Northwestern, they're going to have a lot to prove. Um, they get, they can come out and make a statement. Um, I look for them to win at least eight games this season. Um, they face Michigan State. That's going to be a very good game. Whoever wins that Michigan State-Northwestern game is going to launch one of those teams on the chance to have a great season, the other not-so-great season. If Northwestern can get past Michigan State, they have a pretty easy schedule until they get to um, Nebraska. And I look for them to have a great season. This is a great time, you know, for college football to be back. We're less than one month away. I'm excited for all the Big Ten teams, all the storylines. 
Hopefully in these non-conference games, the Big Ten can represent and show them that we are one of the – we are the best, if not the second best at the SEC conference in college football. I'm very excited for this season, and I cannot wait.